Hi, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a half drop pattern in Adobe Photoshop. In this tutorial, I will walk you through all these steps to create this pattern. Typically, when I design in Photoshop, I like to use actions. Be sure to check out my Ultimate Pattern Maker Toolkit, which includes all of my Photoshop actions and templates to help speed up your workflow when designing in Photoshop. And and I'll leave a link to the toolkit in the description below. Let's go ahead and create a new file. I'm going to use the dimensions of 7200 pixels by 7200 pixels. Resolution of 300 pixels per inch. Color mode is RGB color. And then background content set to transparent. I'm going to go ahead and click on create. To create this pattern, we are going to set up a template using smart objects. To start off with, I'm going to use the help of some guides. So I'm going to go to view guide, new guide layout. We're going to go four columns and four rows, clicking on OK. And then I'm going to use the pen tool. If you right click, keyboard shortcut is P. So we'll hit our pen tool and I'm just going to draw out a diamond with the help of those guides there. And then we will complete our shape here. And then I'm just going to hit enter to finish off that shape there. Let's go ahead and rename our layer here. I'm just going to call it object one. And then I'm also going to use my pen tool and we're just going to create a little bit of an arrow um, for reference. So I'm going to change my fill to no fill. We're going to get a stroke. Let's do a stroke of red. Clicking on OK. And then I am just going to draw just a basic shape here to represent um, directionality of this item. We'll hit enter to finish off that shape there. And then I just want to combine these together. So I'm going to shift click. I'm just going to first rasterize these layers and then I will right click and merge these layers together. And then I'm just going to rename that to object one and we have our shape here. And then I am going to rotate this 45 degrees. So to do that, we're going to go command or control T. Looking at the degree angle here, let's go negative 45 degrees here, clicking on OK. And then we are going to convert this object into a smart object. So I'm going to right click, convert to smart object. So we've saved that smart object as a square. And now I'm going to rotate that back, command or control T. And then let's go 45 degrees here. And it will bring us back to our original clicking on OK. And then now we are going to repeat this in each of the four corners. So let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. You can right click and click on duplicate layer. And I like to just keep the name. So I'm going to delete copy. We're just going to copy this command or control C clicking on OK. We'll go ahead and do it again. Duplicate layer, command or control V just to paste that in. Duplicate layer. And then right click, duplicate layer. Okay, so we have our five instances of this diamond shape and now we are going to position them where we want it. So with this top one, I'm gonna go command or control T to access my free transform tool and then we are going to go to these x and y values so i need to go over and up so over for x we are going to go and negative and then considering the values of our canvas we are 7200 pixels so half of that is 3600 pixels so we'll type that in there and then we need to go up so we are going to go minus to go up 3600 pixels and that will position it where we want it We'll click this next layer and we are going to go to our top right, command or control T. Going into our X value here, we are going to this time move positive. So we're going to go positive 3600 pixels and then we are moving up. So that will still be a negative 3600 pixels. And then we will continue on. So let's go command or control T with this object. We are going to bring it to the bottom left corner. So we will go negative 3600 pixels here. And then Y would be positive since we are going down 3600 pixels. 
And we'll go one more here, Commander Control T for that free transform tool. We'll go positive 3,600 pixels here, and then Y is positive 3,600 pixels here as well. Okay, so we've laid out the foundation of our half drop pattern. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those guides, view, guides, clear guides here. We don't need them anymore. And then I'm just going to zoom out a little bit, command or control with the minus key. And so now we are going to click into our smart object. So we will double click on the icon there. Let's zoom out here, command or control with the minus key. Let's get rid of the guides here, view guides, clear guides. You can see our canvas here. So looking at our object here, we had to rotate it. And so our true um, upward direction is towards this top left corner. So if you need some sort of directionality to your pattern, make sure you orient your objects um, going up towards this left corner. So we can go ahead and turn off the visibility of this object. The reason that I set it up this way is now we can actually use our pattern preview tool of Photoshop, which is really helpful when creating patterns. But the limitation to the pattern preview tool is it is a block style repeat. So in this case, we are combining our kind of block style feature of the pattern preview, but we set up our template in a half drop repeat style. So for the next step, let's just create a couple of flowers. So I'm going to access the ellipse shape tool. Let's set our fill to black, our stroke to no fill. And then I'm just going to draw out a little petal here. And then we are going to repeat that. So I'm going to use the step and repeat feature of Photoshop. So we are going to first set our transformation, which will be the keys. Option Command T for Mac. This would be Alt Control T. So I'm going to hit those keys, Option Command T. And then I am going to just bring this down to the center po bottom point here. And then I'm just going to start rotating and then I'm going to enter my value. So let's go with uh, 72 degrees here. So that's our first step. And then just to get it to repeat again, we're going to hit those same keys with the addition of shift. So Mac, it will be shift option command T for Windows PC will be shift alt control T. So I'm going to hit those keys. In my case, it is shift option command T. And then we'll hold those three keys down and hit T again until we've created our flower. So I'm just going to hit V. Let's center that. Let's create a circle here. We'll just give it a new color for that one, and then we'll create a new one here. And then I'm just going to hit hold down shift, create a little circle. If you create a circle here, if you hit the space bar, it will let you move it to where you want it to. Shift click to select those layers. Let's go. Let's go to layer, combine shapes, and then we're just going to subtract that front shape. We'll go V so we can see it. And we've got our little flower here. So let's go ahead and duplicate that layer. Command or Control J. In this case, we'll hit onto the shape tool. And then instead of a fill, let's give this one a stroke. Let's turn off the visibility here so we can see it. See how it looks. We've got our second flower here. So we can turn that off. And then let's go ahead and try to create a few more flower options. So I'm going to hold shift. Let's do that circle again. And then let's duplicate this one as well. So I'm going to go option command T, alt control T for PC. I'm going to bring that center point here, start rotating it. Let's go our 72 degrees here. And then we'll continue to repeat that. Again, those keys are Shift Option Command T for Mac. That would be Shift Alt Control T for Windows PC. And then just holding those three keys while you hit T to rotate it around. We'll go V so we can see what it looks like. And then I'm going to do change that color again so it's easier to see. Create a new layer. We'll create our little center circle here holding the space bar so I can move it. Okay, and then I'll 
shift click to select both of those layers. We'll go to layer, combine shape, subtract front shape, hitting V for the move tool, and we can see our flower. Let's duplicate that one, command or control J. We'll turn off the visibility there. Let's bring uh, fill to no fill. We'll give it a stroke. Go V so we can see it and we have our shape. So let's go ahead and turn on the visibility of all of these. Let's look at our two big ones here first, bring their scale down here just a little bit. I'm gonna hold Option or Alt just to scale it together. And then we can position them here. And then we'll select our flowers. Okay, so we have a couple of flowers here to choose from um, to start creating our pattern. So the power of this template is we can now use our pattern preview mode. So we're gonna go view pattern preview. And so we did say that this was the top view. Um, and so if you have a flower like this, you may want to rotate it to where the point on each of these is towards the top if you're looking for more of a kind of uniform but if you want a little scattered look it's not as important but I'm going to start it off that way um, for this pattern here and I'm just going to scale these all down again so we'll select them all option and then just bring them down here a little bit so then you can start positioning your elements Click option click will allow you to um, duplicate it and move it. We'll do the same thing here. And then just work on duplicating your elements. You can rotate it, scale it down if you need to, hitting the option, just kind of sizing it down there. Go ahead and duplicate this here. We'll rotate it. Maybe we duplicate this one again. Make it smaller. Hit that option key. Can rotate it. And I'm just doing this black colors, but you could but you could always make these flowers a colored pattern as well. Let's bring this one over. Create another duplicate here. Rotate it around. Okay, so we have the basis of a pattern here. We are in a pattern preview mode, so I'm actually going to save this pattern here um, just so we can see for comparison's sake. I'm going to go ahead and save this, Command or Control S to save it, and then we'll jump over into our template. And we can see that our pattern has repeated. So I am going to use the command in the minus key. And then let's go ahead and turn the pattern preview on in this window. So we'll go view pattern preview. And then let's go ahead and save this pattern here in our patterns panel. Click on the plus icon. We'll click on OK. So we have our repeated pattern with our half drop style and then we saw our simple pattern here in a block style. Let's go ahead and open a new document just to check those out in comparison. So we'll just do the same size 7200 pixels by 7200 pixels clicking on create and then I'm going to bring up a solid color adjustment layer. This is going to be our background FFF for white. And then let's bring our pattern adjustment layer. You can always select from here for your pattern, but I like to select from my patterns panel. So this was our first option. Um, let's do give it a color. So let's go one more solid color adjustment layer. We'll leave it at black for the moment. Right click, create clipping mask. And then let's go ahead and scale down our pattern to a, let's go 25%. Let's see how that looks. So this was our um, first block pattern. And then this is our second one. So looking at this pattern here, um, these black, even with our half drop, these black ones are a little bit dominant. So 
Um, to alter this, I would potentially change um, the location of one of these black elements so it's not as dominant in this pattern here. Um, but this one is the more simple repeat. We see our block style repeats here. And then when we get into this one, it is more dynamic because we have that half drop repeat. And in this case, it's a simple style pattern because we only used a few elements and it is a just a one colored pattern, but you can certainly get more dynamic with multicolor elements. Um, and in this case, we can uh, definitely change out our color here. If we make this white FFF and change our pattern fill to 50%, we can get that two-tone effect. So if we adjust our color here, we can see how it looks. So let's jump back into our template. So we have our pattern here. Let's just go ahead and group those elements. Shift click, Command or Control G to group them together. And then let's try a, another method using this template. I'm going to use the brush tool and then let's hit D to get back to our black color. And then you could also do a kind of a free form pattern doesn't have to be um, shapes or objects. You can create it very freeform here, and then maybe we connect it here together. Um, you can always improve your, your connection however you want it to look. And so we have our simple pattern here. I like to save this one as well, just to see the comparison um, between this pattern here and our next one. We save this here, Command or Control S, jumping into our template, and we have our pattern here. We'll save it, clicking on OK, and then we jump into our template here. We have our first one, which is the block style, and then when you rotate it, we get that half drop repeat of this pattern. So again, we have our original and the rotated version, which you get more of that half drop style. So there are options with this. And here is just a demonstration of another style pattern that I created um, as a demonstration. Again, it's this version is a little bit more boxy, but when we have it repeated, it definitely gives more of that scattered feel, a little bit more dynamic when it is in that half drop style. So I hope you enjoy using this template um, to create patterns in Photoshop. Uh, be sure to check out my full collection of Photoshop actions and templates in my Ultimate Pattern Maker Toolkit for Photoshop. And I will leave a link to that toolkit in the description below. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching this video. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.